Hey, this is Matt. Once again, what about you in the video? The uh, paid request this time for Elliot. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos, topics, reactions, commenters, reviews, re reviews, uh, what have you, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both things are down below in the info box. And this is for two more episodes of Firefly, episodes three and four. Now, I did review the first two episodes. I talked a bit about Firefly, what happened with the show all that jazz so I, this I'll just get more into the episodes episode 3 I believe it was called Bushwhat and not the Daniel Stern movie I didn't mind it I thought it was a nice bit of a sinister horror feel to it bit of a slow burn feel to it uh, the crew is still likable Nathan Fillion Adam Baldwin Alan Tudyk Again, the cast work well together. That's definitely definitely a bit positive of the show. And like they're playing this game that's kind of like basketball, but not really. And they find this short-range shuttle, this uh, little ship. And they see a dead body, and okay, we gotta see what's on there. And you have some funny bits with Adam Baldwin. Like, we shouldn't go on there, what's... Well, there could be some expensive stuff on there. Oh, yeah, 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 we should go on there. You know, in case there's survivors, right? Also, like, there's this doctor that joined in episode one, and Adam Baldwin notices that the guy's a bit iffy on spacesuits. So he tricks the guy to wear in a spacesuit when you don't need to. Because even Nathan Fillion's like, okay, hey, uh, what's with the suit? <laughs> so they're playing pranks on each other. But I like to try to build this atmosphere within this dead ship. I don't mind the lighting in it. It is giving off a bit of a horror feel. They even find like hanging dead bodies. Um, they find one survivor. I uh, like Nathan Fillion. He's a like I say he should have been in a lot of movies. He did a good job in Slither. He mainly worked TV. Castle very successful. I forget how many seasons that was. He's now on, I believe, The Rookie. But this... This is a guy that could have been in a lot of movies as a star. And they just... Hollywood dropped the ball not utilizing this guy. Because, like, the, the survivor trying to calm down. is like, oh, we got mercy. Yeah, mercy. Yeah, you keep saying mercy. We got lots of mercy. We got lots of mercy. And then he punches the guy real quick to knock him out. I thought that was very funny. But fitting for that character. Or like when they get back and the shepherd, the, the preacher guy's like, well, you know, we should have a funeral. And Nathan Fillion goes, I think it's Nathan Fillion. Might have been Adam Baldwin. But I think it's Nathan Fillion. And he goes, you know, the folks are already resting good, shepherd. <laughs> like, you want to have them rest? They're resting pretty good right now. I forget exactly who did, but I thought it was a funny line. A good delivery. And you find out that the Reavers, this group that, you know, we're not seeing at first. We're being fed this information of how terrible they are. That they're cannibalistic and they're, if you see them and you deal with them, you'll go mad yourself and, and all that. And maybe it's best, I, I think they do eventually show them later on, or at least with the movie, Serenity they did. But it's almost like when you build them up so much, any way you could show them could be thought of as disappointing. Like almost because you don't see them, they feel much more of a threat. At least so far. You just see their damage. Like all these dead bodies and hanging from the rafters. It's not a lot of blood and gore. I mean, it was on Fox TV. Although, there was an episode of X-Files called Home, which was pretty crazy. But, uh, th that's a good one. But anyway. They're doing their little things, looking at what they could steal from it. Nathan Phelan's thinking we should kill this guy because he knows it was Reavers. And, um, if you survive that, you're not even lucky. There's a booby trap and the... Kaylee 
Who's like I said, she's pretty much Willow from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. She is. Allison Hannigan. I forget the actress's name who played Willow. It's not the same actress, but it's like the same type of character. Only she's a mechanic. And she deals with the booby trap in order for them to leave. Long story short, too late. The Alliance, the... I don't want to say the good guys, but the more the Federation type of guys. They arrive, and their outfits look like Starship Troopers, which I don't. Know, maybe that was done on purpose, but I swear their outfits look just like Starship Troopers outfits. They pretty much they interview these guys. What are you doing here? What did you find? Hey, we think you guys killed this crew. Well, I'd ask your survivor, but he does ton cut. And that's when Nathan Fielding realizes this guy went crazy. We didn't cut his ton. He cut his own ton out. Or they cut it for him. No, actually, they he cut his own ton. Because he was talking fine before. So if his ton's cut, he did it himself. Self-mutilation, which is another thing Reavers do. So it becomes a bit of a, a, a little bit of a horror film for a, a few minutes, which I liked. I wish there was more of that. I kind of wish there was more of this stalk and slash where here's this bad guy, maybe halfway through, he's loose. And so more of the, the Alliance team are taken out. You can see a bit more of that. I would like to have seen a bit more of that. But you do get some nice humor. Like when they're being interviewed. Alan Tudor just talking about his wife. Oh you know where her lace beat her back. Well actually that whole area. I love about her. And but I said when the survivor becomes. Animalistic. I, said, I wish that whole bit was longer. I think there's a lot more suspense. He could have milked out of it. I think there's a bit more of cat and mouse chase. You could have milked out of it. You could have had like let my crew help. You need all the people you, you can get. To just show how dangerous one guy became a reaver can get. That's what I mean. I think halfway through if you put that into the plot. I think that would have made a good second half of this horror film build up. Where the guys the whole time is mutilating himself. And each time someone tries to get him, you see that he's mutilated himself more and more and more. And he takes, doesn't take care of our crew. They're able to hold their own, but he's taking care of the Alliance soldiers. But yeah, that's really my big nitpick. Is that the cat and mouse is, ends a bit too soon. But I do like Nathan Billing. Nathan Fillion grabs it, just breaks his neck. I did like that moment. And because, you know, he saved this guy's life, they let him go. They take the cargo, but they let him go. So it kind of seems like it was all for naught because they didn't even get the cargo they wanted, you know. And to, I guess you could say it doesn't really go into the bigger story, the bigger picture of the plot. But it was nice to see a bit of a darker, trying to be a bit more of a horror. That's why I wanted to see more of that for the second half. I wanted to see more, but you know, it is what it is. But overall, I didn't mind it. I liked the lighting. The way the characters worked with each other. And I said that bit of horror feel I thought was nice to see. A bit refreshing. I liked it more than episode 4. The Shindig. Other than the bar fight at the beginning. I did like it. Because that was one of my complaints. Was it the pilot episode? Or was it two? One of them. There was like a bar fight. But you barely get to see anything. You do get to see more in this bar fight. With Adam Baldwin and Nathan Fillion. You know, beating up some people. At least you get to see more of that, which is nice. Pretty much, they land somewhere. The uh, companion, the the hooker, but your companion, is being with this nobleman, uptight man. The others are gonna relax. Nathan Fillion meets with this other guy, who we've seen before. I forget the actor's name, but he wants. Nathan Fillion do a job, move some cargo. 
and this guy wants some car to move, but he doesn't want to work with me, so you try to get him to work with you. And the guy he's supposed to convince is Larry Drake. Nice to see Larry Drake, may he rest in peace. Larry Drake was the bad guy Durant in Dark Man, and Dark Man 2. He was also the bad guy in uh, Dr. Doodles. So Dr. Doodles himself is in this. As I said, always nice to see Larry Drake. That was a pleasant surprise. Sorry, nose is itching. Maybe some kind of reaction to seeing Larry Drake. Just miss good character actors like that. Like they pop up, oh yeah, him. He's a good one. Uh... Wish he was still with us. But I didn't care for this because I didn't care about the setting. I didn't care about this big party with this nobleman. And I will say the two least interesting parts so far is Summer Glau. Maybe she gets interesting more, but I don't really care to give a shit about her character at this point. Which I'm not saying this because my friend Afri loved her for a while. It's just, she's just a girl who's like, Ugh! because of these nightmares. And then she does this one thing where she fakes being Irish or whatever to this other guy. But she just, her acting, at least in this, she doesn't seem that good. Or at least maybe with the material she's given. And just, her carriage is not that interesting. I'm like, it's a... I might as well just go watch Bill Yovich and the Fifth Element. Because that's what kind of reminds me. Only, I honestly thought Bill Yovich did that better. I really did. So I just... she And they have there's bits of her in this. And also the stuff with Nathan Fillion and his companion. I'm like, you two, will you two just fuck already? At this, I'm already going, you two just fuck already, man. But I just... Will they? Won't they? No, they won't. And like... The actress is not bad, and Nathan Fillion is not bad, and, you know, there's, to be fair, some chemistry, it's just, I can't say that's the most interesting part of the show to me. And there's Kaylee, uh, again, Willow from Buffy, that's really what she is, wants this pink dress, and finally she gets this pink dress, and she gets to go to the party, the crew are playing cards for chores, which is the, one of the few uh, fun bits I liked in this. I like the fact they're using chores for currency. Like, you do this chore. Yeah. Pretty much Nathan Fillion punches his nobleman saying, Hey, she don't belong to anybody. Because he punched the guy and now they don't have a duel and it's with a sword. Nathan Fillion doesn't know how to use a sword. And Nathan Fillion, he's got a lot of charm to him. You accept my challenge. I accept. That's great. What? <laughs> it's like, okay, fine, we'll accept the challenge. Wait a minute, what challenge? <laughs> it, it makes for a fun lead character. Charm, charisma. Like you say, he should have, should have had him as Nathan Drake in Uncharted, for fuck's sake. Such a bad, uh, missed opportunity. So they have a sword fight. He cheats to win. I like that he wins, but he's like, "Fine, I'll give you mercy." Just mercy is the right. Mercy is the mark of a great man. But he keeps poking him. Okay, he's the mark of a good man. He still keeps poking him. Well, I'm all right. He pokes him like one more. Like Nathan Fillion helped make this episode watchable to me. They say his charm, his charisma, his presence, some of the fun bits. It's just, I didn't care about the story. I didn't care about the nobleman stuff. I didn't care about the bits with Summer Lau. I would say, of the first four, these are, this is my least favorite episode so far. So that god awful. I did Nathan Fillion's fun. I like the bed of them playing cards with the chores. Larry Drake's nice to see him, and you find out what the, what the cargo is, because Larry Drake is impressed by Nathan Fillion giving and showing mercy. So the cargo he needs to be moved is cattle. Cows. 
but it just it, it doesn't further the bit point of the the plot the story the background whatever the full arc of the show is happened to be I just to once again show this whole will they won't they between Nathan and his companion which I said is one of the least interesting parts along with the summer Glau stuff which I know the summer Glau stuff is part of the overarching big story of this just the Alliance guys want her because she knows all these secrets and stuff and maybe summer Glau like gets better maybe that's it but yeah I don't know, it just, it just didn't do much for me, the whole sword duel. I just, eh. I just didn't really feel this episode. I don't know else to put it. I didn't really feel it. Maybe, maybe that's just me. I much prefer the, the previous episode, the more, like, just darker... I love the humor, but, you know... I like the, the idea story in episode 3 much more. Like, the Reaver stuff, that seems much more of an interesting background than than this stuff so that's just me with that said thanks for watching take care we'll see you guys later bye bye